Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening and welcome to Bank of India's Q4 FY24 conference call. I would like to thank all of you for taking out time and joining us today. We have with us Shri Rajnish Karnatak, MD and CEO, Shri P R Rajagopal, Executive Director, Shri M Karthikeyan, Executive Director, Shri Shubhrat Kumar. executive director shri rajiv mishra executive director and other top management team from bank of india participants we have placed all microphones on mute at the end during the q and a session we will be sending you a request to unmute yourself in order to ask questions i will take you through this process before the q and a session commences however the management will continue to remain unmuted throughout the session i would now request shri rajnish karnatak to address the gathering thank you and over to you sir yeah thank you kejal good afternoon to all the dignitaries ladies and gentlemen present in today's analyst meet it is my pleasure to welcome you all for the interaction post publication of the financial results of the bank for q4 fy24 as well as full year of fy 2324 in the current scenario of ongoing geopolitical tensions and spiraling inflationary pressures indian economy navigated the challenges steadfastly and emerged as the new growth engine for the global economy india became the fastest growing major economy in the world in 2324 for the third consecutive year by logging 7% plus real gdp growth underpinned by strong domestic demand and backed by robust macroeconomic fundamentals bank credit played an important role in this by registering a growth of 20.20% while deposit grew by 13.5% in the last fiscal year against this backdrop the bank is focusing on sustainable development by achieving its goal through enhanced customer experience the thrust areas to be generation of low cost resources like casa and retail term deposits growth in high yielding rem segment mid corporate advances consistent improvement in asset quality along with slippage containment and improving collection efficiency and npa recovery this is supported by increasing scale of digitization with resilient cyber security measures robust compliance and governance and also reskilling and upskilling of the staff in this direction a few new initiatives are taken number 1 on the business side bank of india star family savings account has been launched to give privileges and benefits to the customers and their family members number 2 to promote green energy emission our tailored product namely boi star rooftop solar panel finance has been launched with loans up to 10 lakhs for individuals and up to rupees 100 lakhs for registering housing registered housing societies number 3 tie up with exim bank for facilitating cross border trade under trade assistance program called tap Number four, Bank of India Shareholding Limited, wholly owned subsidiary of the bank, has been mandated to act as a BSA, which is business sourcing agent for our lending products. On the HR side, number one, initiation of HR transformation project BOI Starlight, leading innovation and growth with human talent, with Boston Consultancy Group (BCG), which will assist in preparing human resources for strategic growth and new age banking. Number two. Star Connect and Empowerment Program Star Summer a new initiative launched to empower and assist the employees to share career aspirations goals and other challenges faced by them on the IT side automation of business process under intelligent process automation ipa solution given by accenture has been onboarded to enhance ai and ml capabilities in enhancing quality business through better underwriting customer experience and fraud prevention through data lake number 2 procurement of cyber solutions for proactive management with focus on detection and containment of cyber risk number 3 implementation of api based digital document execution of lockers by using the services of nesl number 4 procurement of oracle web based enterprise edition licenses for the mlock aml compliance solution for overseas operations number 5 introduction of rupee bharat credit card for benefits from amazon flipkart swiggy big basket etc we have published published the shared financial results 
of the bank for Q4 of FY23-24 and full financial year 24 on 10th May 2024. The main highlights are as under. On the business side, business uh, global business increased by 11.65% YOY from 11.85 trillion in March 23 to 13.23 trillion in March 24 with an incremental growth of 1.38 trillion. Global advances increased by 13.52% YOY from 5.15 trillion in March 23 to 5.85 trillion in March 24 with an incremental growth of rupees 69,000 crores. CASA increased by 7.03% YOY from 2.52 trillion in March 23 to 2.69 trillion in March 24, an incremental growth of 17,000 crore plus and CASA ratio stood at 43%. Domestic advances increased by 14.08% YOY from 14.31 trillion in March 23 to 4.92 trillion in March 24 with an incremental growth of 60,000 crores. RAM advances increased by 15.55% YOY to 2.74 trillion led by a growth in retail YOY by 18.12% uh, touching 1.11 trillion. As regards profitability and asset quality, net profit for FY24 stands at 6,318 crores, witnessing a YOY growth of 57%. Global NIM stood at 2.97% and domestic NIM stood at 3.34% in FY24. Net interest income for FY24 has increased by 14% on YOY basis to Rs. 23,053 crores. There has been improvement in the asset quality with reduction in gross NPA and net NPA ratios. The gross NPA ratio stood at 4.98% improved by 233 basis point YOY for FY24. Net NPA ratio at 1.22% improved by 44 basis point YOY for FY24. We are projecting domestic credit growth of around 13% and domestic deposit growth of around 12% for FY25 with focus on CASA and retail term deposits. The thrust will be on increasing average deposits and advances consistently to increase the interest income and containing controllable expenses. The strategy will be augmenting high yielding advances like RAM, retail agriculture MSME and mid corporate advances, garnering low cost deposits and maintaining NIM at 3% for FY25. By leveraging digitization levels, we will be improving our underwriting standards and further minimizing fresh slippages to bring down GNPA and NNPA ratio. We will continue to strive towards enhanced customers' experience through new digital initiatives for sustainable business growth with focus on robust compliance and governance. Our bank will be the partner in progress of the nation by contributing in India's vision of Vixit Bharat by 2047 by fostering inclusive growth, increasing stakeholders' value, and improving profitability parameters. I would like to thank you all for patient hearing and joining today. The floor is now open for discussion and question and answers. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Participants, you will notice a small icon on your screen, a hand sign. Once you press this, it will alert us that you would like to ask a question. We will go around one by one. The analyst asking the question will be unmuted and you will get a notification on your screen to unmute yourself. Kindly do so. Identify yourself before asking the question. Each participant will be allowed to ask two questions. If they have more questions, you are requested to join back the queue. We shall take basis the time availability. Allow us a moment for the queue. The first in line is Mr. Ashok Ajmera. Sir, please unmute yourself and proceed. Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks for giving this opportunity. And uh, another G, uh, otherwise, <clears throat> except this higher provisioning, which has dented our profit uh, for the quarter, uh, otherwise, the results are good, the performance is very good, and the various initiatives which you have taken will definitely will bring in a lot of fruits in coming future. Having said that, the first, sir, that <clears throat> what is this provisioning for 1,826 crore in this quarter? NPA is 2,043 crore, NPA provision. And what was the, I mean, how, how the same is increased so much vis-a-vis -vis the last quarter, 
Yeah, thank you, Admira ji. Thank you so much for your observation. As regards uh, this provisioning, you are right that we had made a provision of 2,043 crores in this quarter in Q4. If you compare it with uh, Q4 of FY23, the provision is quite higher. That time it was only 546 crores. However, if you look at Admira uh, ji, our YOY numbers, so the provision is only 4,109 uh, crores on bad or doubtful debt as against 3,600 crores. So the increase is only 14% in the provision. Now coming to your point, uh, what is this 2,000 crore and what does it comprise of? So let me clarify here that it comprises of additional provision is there, there is some one number of around 800 crore which is due to the aging. That is one provision. Then there is reversal of provision in the PWO accounts uh, to the PNL uh, due to cash recovery that is around 312 crores. There is one provision of uh, reversal of SR which is 125 crores and there is uh, some correction uh, of provision in the Sarai uh, accounting which we had done in December that is up to the tune of around 55 crores. Then there were certain NPAs because of which the provision had to take place and we have also done some prudent provision with respect to small MSME accounts and other accounts where we thought that the uh, security is not there and the provision was on lower side. So we have treated those loans, small loans as unsecured and made full 100% 100 provision. So thereby totaling 2,043 crores. So this is an aberration in this quarter. Definitely the provision will not be high in the assuming quarter. Definitely as you rightly said that this uh, provision uh, has dented our uh, final net profit. Otherwise the net profit would have been even better. Finally, we could still show a net profit of 6,318 crores, Admiraji, as against last yes. year's 4,000 crores, which is an improvement of around 57 crores of net profit. So, sir, uh, you said some additional provisions and has been made. So, in the overall bank's book, how much additional or floating provision we are having over and above the IREC <coughs> provision as per IREC norms? No, that, that number is the, as per IRAC only, no? No, I mean, do we have any additional uh, provision in the books of the bank? Other than the normal provision which is required? No, no, no. We are not having yeah. any additional provision which is required. Whatever the provision is there, that is all as per the IRAC norms. Okay, sir. My second question is, sir, on this uh, recent RBI uh, guidelines for the higher provisioning on the project loans which is, of course, at the very initial stage. But uh, I think every bank has done some some rough calculations or some ballpark figure can be arrived at that if it comes, it becomes effective, then what would be the our provisioning requirement at least in one first financial year after its implementation? And how much is the project yes. loan total portfolio? Out of the entire infra and project portfolio, how much is the project loans, which comes under the purview of this circular? Yeah, yeah. So this uh, circular of 3rd May 2024 by RBI, uh, in which, yes. uh, as you are aware that we have to submit our feedback to RBI because this is just a draft circular by 15th of June. Our risk department is already working on it. They are doing the detailed calculations. At this present moment, we have only ballpark numbers. If you see the, uh, yes. the impact of it, on the ballpark number, it is around only 20% of the portfolio of our infrastructure portfolio and our project funding portfolio on the industrial sector. It will be around 20% only because it relates, this circular relates only to those accounts where which have green financing, where the COD is yet to be achieved or where COD is recently achieved and this provisioning has to take place for the next three years after the COD is achieved. So that uh, our portfolio that hit which is coming is around only 20% of the total book of that. That is one what part. The what, second part is... What could be that yeah. number? About 12,000, 15,000 crore total? So that book is around 90,000 crore, 20% okay. of which may be uh, oh, impacted okay. under that. That is one ballpark number. As regarding yeah. the credit cost is concerned, we have calculated as a ballpark figure. This is a tentative figure only at present. That will come to our increase in credit cost will be 10 basis points only. And that too as on March 20, 2027 when the third year happens and it, it, the provision is at its peak. And this 10% basis, 10 basis point projection, estimation rather, is also on the basis of the fact that our credit growth grows by 10%. So that is on the credit cost side. On the CET1 impact side, the CET1 may increase 
from 20 to 22 basis points that is the only impact and one thing i would further like to clarify that it will not impact the crar of the bank because cet1 impact under this circular will not uh, shave off the crar of the bank that is the guidelines from rbi so this is our submission presently on whatever the working has been done on this circular uh, that is good to know sir <clears throat> sir our treasury has performed well if you look at the segment wise results <clears throat> the treasury profit is 1374 crore whereas the major hit taken is the wholesale book of the higher provisioning so going forward uh, <clears throat> where do we stand as far as the treasury profitability is concerned and the kind of the afs book which we are having though now the afs profit or loss i mean mark to market or profit will not be taken in the pnl but uh, what what can you give some color on that on the treasury performance in the coming quarter sir See, with the new RBI circular, Ajmer Ji, what I what we think is that Treasury will transform into a NIM center rather than a profit center. So this yeah. is our clear understanding because of the new RBI circular. So whatever the profitability is, bank used to get because of the change in yields on a higher side or a lower side, that will not much be available to the banks henceforth. So it will be more of a NIM center rather than a profit center. That is what I can say at this juncture. Thank you, sir. Next in line is Mr. Jay Mundra. Sir, you may proceed. Jay, sir, you may proceed. Hello. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yes, sir. You may proceed. Jay. Yes, sir. Sir, my question is: um, Last quarter, actually, we had a negative. Uh, uh, where in margin declined in third quarter and fourth quarter, we have seen higher slippages, right? So, uh, uh, I mean, what what is the reason for the higher slippages this quarter? Uh, could this be a new normal for the bank, or you know, what are the key reasons for rise in agri SME and corporate slippages this quarter thank you yeah as regards the slippages are concerned see if you see uh, the slippages in the q3 uh, q4 of fy23 was 2625 that is in our presentation also in this quarter the slippage has been 2038 though the slippage in uh, this uh, uh, quarter q4 of this financial year have been lower than last year still but it is 2038 crores is still on a higher side because we had shown a Uh, spread slippage of only 1,313 crores in the Q3 of FY24. So it is higher, definitely we agree. But if you see on the YOY basis also, Jed, our slippage in last year FY23 was 7,969 crores, and in this year total aggregating for 12 months, it is only 7,551 crores, which includes spread slippage and debit in these accounts. So further breaking down, as you ask, what is this breakup of this 2,000 crores of spread slippages? So if you see. on uh, there is in the presentation also 70% of this slippage is in agriculture and msme only and remaining 440 crore is in one of the uh, large corporate accounts uh, which is there in odisha and another state government account in punjab in uh, let me tell you that there is 300 crore plus account which slipped to npa in q4 in punjab out of that 65 crore of overdue has been recovered another 65 crore will be recovered uh, within next 10 days and this account will get upgraded so this 300 crore will get upgraded out of that so we are cognizant of that and we are trying to minimize the recovery however if you see our sma numbers so sma number which was 16900 crore above 5 crore number as on march 23 it has come down to only 7100 crore as on march 24 and which is only 1.2% 28% of our total standard loan book if i further give you a color on this number of 7000 out of that there are four accounts of 4400 crores of uh, state government of telangana accounts if you remove them so then our uh, sma 5 crore and above is only 2600 crore which comes to only 0.47% of the total standard book so we are very confident that this uh, quarter has been a aberration and definitely moving forward in q1 and q2 the slippages will be considerably less than what has been in q4 Thank you, sir. Next question is from the line of Mr. Rakesh Kumar. Sir, please proceed. Uh, 
so the first question sir so, uh, just a continuation of the last question you are saying that in q1 and q2 slippage would be reasonably less so could you quantify that uh, figure sir how much less and what would be the number yeah so if you see uh, if you see our slippage ratio for this quarter you must have seen in our presentation also that uh, slippage ratio has uh, increased considerably so it was uh, 1.94 uh, uh, percent in uh, march 23 it has come down to 1.58 percent in uh, this uh, march 24 so we are very confident that uh, for march 25 it will be considerably lower and we are giving a guidance of around 1.20 for march 25 as far as the slippage ratio is concerned this is okay Sir, in the SMA one and SMA two, in the agri as on December was two fifty nine crore. And what was the slippage in this quarter, sir? In agri. In agri, the slippage you are asking. Yeah. Yes, so in sir. agri, the to the slippage net slippage was the six hundred and twenty six crores. No, no gross slippage, sir. Gross slippage in this quarter from agri, sir. A gross slippage was one thousand twenty one crores. And the SMA one and two put together is two two sixty crore, sir. Uh, December, correct, sir? So SMA one and two is for five crore and above accounts uh, in the presentation. So this slippage is a global slippage which includes all accounts. Even a ten thousand rupees account comes under that. This is final slippage. So what would be the SMA, sir, in the below five crore accounts, sir? In agree currently, sir? So that will come back to you separately. Presently, okay. I am not having this number because I am having the presentation only with me. They will come to back to you for this separately. Correct, correct. Thank you, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Rakesh, sir. Next in line, we have Mr. Maharuk Ajaniya, sir. You may proceed. Uh, sir, uh, I had uh, sorry, uh, but just to harp again on slippages. So what I I know that year on year uh, every fourth quarter there may be high slippages and you also explained earlier on that in September and March uh, you know there seasonality and slippages generally tend higher in agri and maybe even in MSME but this time round the Q O Q growth in MSME and agri slippage is much higher than the last few years so what really drove that. I mean, why is it that seasonality is sharper in the fourth quarter this year, and also in the? So that's my first question. I'll ask the next question later after this. Yeah, yeah. So you rightly observed that there has been more slippage in agri and MSME in the last two succeeding quarters, in December quarter also, in March quarter also. That is because of the fact that there was stress, some there is some stress building up in agriculture and MSME stock. Uh, typically small ticket accounts as you have heard the previous uh, question also ki why this above 5 crore is not reflecting here because these are all small accounts where this slippage has taken place that is why it is not showing up in the presentation so they were they are typically those accounts which are small accounts and obviously less than very much less than 5 crores they are less than in fact uh, less than 50 lakhs kind of accounts so there is where the slippage is and in agriculture there are a couple of states every quarter seasonally a couple of states show Uh, stress and NPA in agriculture. This time also there were a couple of states where agriculture NPA came out larger in numbers than in other states. Okay, sir. Uh, and uh, in terms of provisioning, you mentioned uh, a lot of breakdown. So what was the shrey portion? And are you certain that in the first quarter a lot of the agri and MSME? Uh, slippages will revive in the first quarter, as in that they will be upgraded. Yeah, yeah. So we had a VC on Friday also with our field people, our FGMs, 13 FGMs and zonal heads. And today also we had a meeting internally at the top management level. So there are two pieces to it, Maruk. One part is that the fresh slippages which have taken it in the mostly typically in the March month of FY24. and the other is the slippages which are taking place say after 1st of uh, uh, april so we have sensitized the field now they have started working in upgrading of these accounts so whatever the amount has to be recovered overdue account they will be recovering and uh, upgrading these accounts so we are expecting a good upgradation happening 
uh, from the slippage which happened in March also and whatever slipped after post of March. That is from 1st of April. Okay, and the Shri provision, you said there was some extra on Shri, so... So, it was not extra. It was a correction in provision of Shri of 55 crores, which was a difference which was left out last quarter. So, this 55 has taken, uh, was taken care in Q4. So, everything is taken care in Shri now. Okay, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Maharuk, ma'am. Next in line, we have Mr. Sunil Choksi. So you may unmute yourself and proceed. Congratulations for very stable numbers by one event which is not in your hands. Uh, my first question comes from your TV interview where you spoke about credit growth, uh, credit pipeline already visible. Can you elaborate that a little bit? Yeah, yeah. So, as regards our credit side is concerned, you are aware that we have touched 5.75 trillion on the credit number with a growth of around 13%. And Sushilji, if you see our domestic credit numbers, there the growth is more than 14%. So, for the guidance also for FY25, we have given a guidance of 13 to 14% of global credit growth. Presently, also we are having, um, as I told in my TV interview, that pipeline of nearly 50,000 crores we are having as on 31st March 24 out of which around 38,000 crores is with respect to corporate credit and around 12,000 crores with respect to the RAM credit in typically in retail and MSME. So this will get uh, be disbursed in the next ensuing two quarters in Q1 and Q2. And within that, there is a healthy pipeline with respect to, we have pipeline in infrastructure with respect to power also, green power, in uh, solar we have, in wind also we are having, and then uh, some of the thermal power plants are also coming for refinance. That is also there in the pipeline. Then steel industry, textile is there, uh, pharmaceutical is there, chemical is there, oil companies also sanctions we have given. And about from that, uh, I would say that the retail and agriculture good growth is happening. YOY growth, if you see in the retail side, our growth was around 18% on uh, this one. Uh, re, this agriculture, it was 18, 16% uh, and in the MSME, it was 10%. And we have also adopted these uh, cluster-based schemes. From there also, we are getting good traction in the MSME. Apart from that, uh, under the PLI scheme also we are funding. Gati Shakti also, there are road projects which are coming which we are funding. So all in all, we are seeing a broad-based uh, credit growth coming, not only from the RAM sector, but also from the mid-corporate and large corporate sector. And Sunilji, one, Sushilji, one thing more we would like to tell that, apart from the nine large corporate branches, we are also having 18 emerging corporate branches across India. So these 27 branches, our... Uh, of our branches in corporate credit are uh, sending us and uh, uh, marketing the proposals with respect to 50 crore and above corporate credit. So we do not see any challenge as far as credit growth is concerned. Sir, your processing and ability speaks for the volume. So I don't want to elaborate on it, but we have signed up with REC, PFC, Erida and various other organizations. Are we doing some kind of a joint lending program or it's a downsell which is more happening underwritten process by them? No, the, the agreement that we have, MOU, which we have signed is only with the REC. There also we are very selective on the projects which we will be taking. So it is not a downsell, it is a joint lending whichever we are doing. So we are open to all things, we are open to all syndicates also which are happening. So we are also open to syndication teams uh, which are there from HDFC, ICICI, Axis Bank, SBI cap, apart from uh, REC, PFC, etc. My next question is, uh, India is getting included in various indices on the global market where their bond market is concerned and this will have a huge impact on not only money market but also an FX market. Being a leading institution with global presence, how are we capitalizing on this opportunity which we may have starting July for domestic trading as well as FX and participants whom we can capitalize as our customers for future. Yeah, that is, that is the opportunity is there as you rightly said. We are keenly looking into that. Our domestic treasury team and the international treasury team is closely watching it. Though there has been some shrinkage of the margin as far as the forex derivatives are concerned because of the high interest rate in the overseas market. But definitely we also feel that the with the softening of interest rate, this market will come back and we'll be able to make some money 
in those uh, forex derivatives also my question was more pertaining towards your participation a uh, linkage with investors who are coming to gift city or they may be a huge inflow of fx as well as depository participants or it participation via bond market where our government uh, security slr and holding is concerned i was looking from that direction because beside your corporate credit uh, treasury can have a super profit at the same time retail can grow on a sustainable basis yeah that our gift city is already looking into it some products we are uh, we are contemplating for having in the bank uh, for which uh, we are already working on thank you sir thank you for answering all my question and best wishes for your so come thank you thank you thank you sunil sir sir the next question we've got a text by mr jay mundra his follow up question is can you give some guidance on fy 25s loan growth nims credit cost and roa okay credit cost to i have already explained the credit cost part we are saying that we'll have a credit growth of around 13 to 14% that is on one part as regards nims are concerned so nims uh, if you see our nim has gone down from 3.01% to 2.97% as on 31st march 24 uh, though we have protected the nim in spite of the tight liquidity position which is there all around in the market and uh, resources is a challenge still we are able to protect the global nim at uh, 2.97% as far as our domestic nim is concerned the domestic nim was 3.34% in spite of the fact that all uh, tight position was there in the domestic market also as regards guidance is concerned so on the in, the global nim side we are giving a guidance of around 2.95% and on the domestic side we are giving a guidance of 3.30% considering the fact that in the near term the liquidity tightening will be there and we feel that july onwards the liquidity tightening would ease and maybe the rate may come down by the end of this calendar year as regards roa is concerned so roa uh, for us roa is uh, now 0.70 as against 0.49 as on march 23 so as regards the guidance is concerned for march 25 specifically we are very much hopeful that we will be able to reach the roa of around 0.90% thank you sir next in line we have mr ronak daga sir you may unmute yourself and proceed so the question for mind is that you had lower standard asset provisioning in fy24 so can you elaborate on the same yeah lower standard asset provisioning no yes, yes. so this uh, standard asset provisioning which was there earlier that was mainly because of the 7th june circular which we had to do so if you see the standard asset uh, provisioning which was there at 2354 crores for the 12 month march 23 has come down to 162 minus 162 that is because whatever the accounts uh, we had to provide because of the 7th june circular these are all accounts uh, were showing uh, standard uh, uh, regular uh, in performance and sma 012 stress was not there so with the Uh, with the discussion with the auditors and others uh, we have uh, taken out these provisions in the standard book this was typically all because of the 7 june circular in uh, certain accounts okay and sir what will be the number in fi 25 yeah uh, come again please uh, sir what will be the standard asset provisioning in fi 25 so we do not see much of provisioning here because all the accounts presently in none of the accounts as we speak such kind of sma 012 is happening so not, none of the accounts also has been flagged by uh, any of the auditors or anything so we expect a minimal provision to be there in the asset standard asset as on march 25 okay and sir uh, what will be your slippage guidance for fi 25 so as a, as regards the slippage guidance is concerned so slippage ratio if you see in our presentation presently we have given a slippage ratio of around uh, this one 1.58% as on march 24 as regards the guidance will improve our collection efficiencies and uh, the guidance would be at around 1.20% for march 25 okay sir yes thanks a lot thank you participants you may click the hand icon to join the q and a session next in line we have mr ashok ajmera with a follow up question so you may unmute yourself and proceed thanks for the 
giving the opportunity second time uh, sir uh, what is our uh, total uh, two book or uh, aka book uh, what is the overall aggregate uh, figure and how much do we expect to recover in fi 25 yeah so what from the total book of okay so 43000 crore is our to- uh, total two book okay and generally yeah generally how much uh, 40000 crores yeah and how much do we expect to recover year after year or say in fi 25 yeah yeah if you see our figures for this financial year we had recovered 7500 crore which is plus slippage and debits in the existing npa account so cash recovery against this was 6305 crores through cash recovery and upgradation plus there was also some recovery done in the return of accounts in, during this financial year this year also we uh, plan to have a better ratio than this internally if you see we have given a guidance to our on field functionary whatever the fresh slippage happens two times of that we need to recover as a total recovery so that is the guidance under which we are working in the field level so the whatever the recovery which we had in this financial year of 6300 crore plus the recovery and return of definitely it will be better than that okay okay sir and on the whole uh, on the technology front uh, sir we have been talking for last 6 uh, 8 quarters you know we have, we have we have been spending also good amount of money uh, on the technology even i mean this discussion is going on for last 2 to 1/2 year 3 years uh, but finally how many like such verticals which were planned and have been completed and put into the practice and what is the advantage of this technology upgradation so far we are getting uh, uh, quarter after quarter or year after year uh, can you little bit elaborate on the total uh, technology uh, development and the spends and the budget now planned yeah yeah so almira ji as regards our technology part is concerned so we had a budgeted number of 2000 crore for financial year 23 24 against that 2000 crore of budget we have already spent 75% of this budget as on march 24 within that 2000 crores uh, we have split it into this capex and opex in opex the expenditure budgeted was around 1200 crores and for capex it was around 800 crores so to and 75% has of that has already been spent so that is the broad numbers that uh, i am giving you apart from that what are the benefits which have accrued to the banks so definitely there are uh, many benefits which have accrued to the bank uh, one thing i would like to say that we have already started a data lake project also under essenture which will be giving us uh, generative ai ai and ml so that is one thing which we have started and we are expecting that by q3 of this financial year that numbers will start uh, coming in so that is one part the other part is with respect to the digital banking uh, landscape which is there if you see our numbers on the digital lending side i would just share that number which is on page 31 of our slide so 7.5 lakh of loans retail loans whether it is retail agriculture msav have been sanctioned on the digital platform these are personal loan pension loans vehicle loans gold loans kisan credit card shg mudra loans all the three shishu kishore and tarun so this 5.7.5 lakh of loans which have been sanctioned under the digital platform the amount aggregating is around 15000 crores for this financial year so apart from that 13 35 new projects will be products will be launched in this financial year fy25 one more thing i would like to tell is under the digital platform another thing that we have done is that renewal of small mudra loans which is taking place through the automated mode so what has happened is that branches are now free from doing the renewal in these small digital loans from these small mudra loans and it is getting renewed under the digital format and so so much of operational efficiency and saving of time at the branch level officer has happened in the bank level apart from that you are aware that uh, that mobile app also we have launched with 300 plus features another thing which we have done is that uh, wipro is working with the bank very closely for giving supply chain finance product and also uh, some product on the cash flow mundi Uh, uh this uh, management of cash flow so all yeah. these things taken together definitely in the next 12 to 18 months lot of digital and it transformation will take place uh, in the bank which will further help us improving our operational efficiency and showing better profitability and sir the last question is sir uh, like every other bank we were also trying for last 2 3 years to have some good co lending franchise uh, franchise so 
uh, have we made some major breakthrough on that and what is our core lending total overall portfolio and the kind of uh, returns which we are getting yeah yeah so as regards core lending and pool purchases there we have already 7 8 partners which are there so aggregating if i tell you the ballpark book the book is around 4000 crores as on march 24 core lending and pool purchase together and uh, the 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 kind of irr or returns uh, a little better than i mean in what range so irr will always this? be better in uh, this one co lending and pool yeah. purchase because there is not much of operational cost of nord over there yes so if 4000 crore of uh, ram lo- uh, sector loan we have to do entire 5100 branches would have got involved in doing small small retail msme and agri loans but here in at one single branch everything is getting placed only uh, five seven eight staff is there and the entire thing is going through a digital platform uh, seamlessly so definitely operational cost is less and definitely the irr is much better over there thank you sir next question we have received in the chat from narendra his question is what would be our guidance on cost to income ratio yeah as regards cost to income ratio is there march 23 we had a cost to income ratio of 51.08% which increased to 51.73% in fy24 for the simple reason that the employee cost had also gone up because of the wage revision and the full impact of it up to march 31st march 2024 we have taken both on the employee number side and also on the as15 side so for the guidance as regards the guidance for march 25 we are saying that the cost to income ratio shall be around 51% 51 thank you sir last in line we have mr ronak daga with a follow up question ronak you may proceed uh, yeah thanks for the opportunity again so sir what will be the tax rate in fi 25 what would be the tax rate tax rate yeah kumar so it will be 25% reduction already we migrated to new tax rate yeah. so we'll continue to maintain the same tax rate sir 25 so we have already migrated to the new tax regime ronak on uh, september 23 so the new tax rate for us is 25% that is the rate that will continue okay and uh, the last question will be what would be the impact of the new guidelines on investment classification and valuation which has become effective from 1st april treasury wala treasury wala so if you want to yeah sir uh, basically we uh, the volatility in the uh, in the uh, gsec portfolio especially the investment portfolio will reduce in fact because the shifting is no longer allowed so we will be focusing more on uh, interest income as far as the htm uh, portfolio is concerned uh, however it will give us an opportunity to have a medium term view in the trading portfolio where the uh, the, uh, the removal of that 90 day ceiling will help us hold our securities for a longer period uh, for uh, from the trading perspective so more focus on uh, increasing the uh, interest income and uh, Uh, view based trading so both ways we don't see overall income will not be impacted but uh, volatility in the uh, because with every interest rate cycle the uh, the capital gains uh, booking will reduce, come down okay sir thank you sir thank you with this we would conclude our analyst call i would now request shri rajesh karnatak for his closing comments yeah kejal i would just like to clarify on behalf of the bank uh, two points uh, to all our analysts who are there so i was expecting some question on that but it had not come because some of observations were coming in the press also uh, with respect to our non interest income and the operating profit which is there so just want to clarify further in detail so as regards non interest income is concerned we had a quarter on quarter reduction in the non interest income from 3099 crore in q4 of 23 to 1751 crores in uh, march of 24 the why why there is a reduction of 43 uh, percent so however we would like to clarify that uh, in q3 q4 of march 23 there was one time income of 1646 crores on the sr side which were booked under the profit from sale of revaluation of investments so that was the one time book entry which was there if we net it off so last year's non interest income was last quarter's q4 of fy 23 Uh, this uh, income was non interest income was only 1453 netting it off so th- actually there is a growth of 20% so 
on the non interest income side on a quarter on quarter basis as regards the yoy basis non interest income if we net off this 1646 crores from the total non interest income of the year of fy23 the net income from 7100 comes down to 5454 crores and this year we have shown a income of non interest income of 6095 crores which is a increase of 641 crores so instead of a negative of minus 14 our non interest income in fact has gone up by 11% if we remove that one of uh, item which was a book entry which was there in the last year similarly on the operating profit side so operating profit if you see in our presentation in q4 of fy23 it is 4184 crores again this 1646 uh, crores of uh, sr impact which was there in book entry last year if we net it off the operating profit for last year q4 was 2584 crores and this year we have shown a operating profit of 3557 crores which means a increase of 973 crores so uh, as against the presentation which is there at minus 15% after netting we have a increase of actually 37% in operating profit on q on q basis regards uh, yoy basis we had shown last year 1393 crores of uh, operating profit if we net off that one time entry which was of the sr of 1646 crore the net uh, operating profit was 12353 crores and this year since we have operating profit of 14069 crores the increase in operating profit is 1716 crores for bank of india so as against 5% which we have shown in the slide if we net off this sr number which is a accounting number actually our operating profit has gone up by 13% so on both the sides net non interest income and operating profit the numbers were actually high but due to one single entry on the and book side uh, on the accounting book side we had uh, to show a lower operating profit and uh, the non interest income so this is one clarification i wanted to give before we close this and list call thank you so much from bank of india side and thank you all for joining thank you so much thank you rajnisha for the detailed explanation participants on behalf of bank of india I now announce that this conference is concluded you may disconnect thank you very much for joining